bearing capacity there are three types of failure the bearing of capacity failures one is general shear failure most common type of shear failure occurs in strong soils and rocks and local shear failure intermediate between general and punching shear failure the punching shear failure occurs in very loose sands and weak clays these bearing capacity failures are given and below any foundation or below any below the soils the general shear failure local shear failure and punching shear failure are shown comments on shear failure usually only necessary to analyze a general shear failure local and punching shear failure can usually be anticipated by settlement analysis failure in shallow foundations is generally settlement failure and bearing capacity failures must be analyzed but in practical terms is usually secondary to the settlement analysis assumptions for terjagi bearing capacity failures depth of foundation is less than or equal to its width no sliding occurs between foundation and soil so rough foundation is there and soil beneath the foundation is homogeneous semi infinite mass morse coulomb model for soil works and general shear failure mode is the governing mode but not only the mode further no soil consolidation occurs foundation is very rigid relative to the soil soil above bottom of foundation has no shear strength is only a surcharge load against the wall turning load applied load is comprehensive comp compressive and applied vertically to centroid of the foundation no applied movements present failure geometry for terjagi method is given in the so there are the ultimate q u is equal to q c plus q q plus q gamma is three terms it is there and active rankins zone is shown and passive rankins zone is shown and wedge is there a wedge type of penetration is there and all these things are shown in the geometrically shown in the figure the general bearing capacity equation q ultimate is equal to c n c or f c s f c d f c i which you can also call it as s c d c i c s is the shear factor d is the depth factor or i is the inclination factor for all the three um, q inverse which is equal to gamma into um, depth and this is the depth factor so shape depth factor shape, shape shape factor and depth factor as well as um, inclination factor is also half gamma b into n gamma this is also given this that is the wedge failure concept that is shape gamma and depth gamma and i gamma is there and first one is c value with c value it is added and this second one is depth and uh, surcharge on either side it is taken as surcharge gamma h is the depth of foundation that is gamma d uh, gamma into d that is depth of foundation this is surcharge factor this is a wedge failure factor n c n q n gamma r the bearing capacity factors and c is the cohesion and q is the 
excavated soil pressure and footing in bus in what that is gamma into d. gamma is the unit weight of soil and b is the width of the foundation equal or diameter uh, for the circular foundation terjagi bearing capacity factors are given nc nq n gamma and here it is the phi value if phi is 0 the nc value nq n gamma value and phi is 5 and phi is 10 degrees and phi is 15 degrees 20 degrees like that if anything phi is a 13 degrees or in between these things we can interpret in linear proportion linear proportionality is used and the things are interpreted Brinch Hansen also given the NC and Q and gamma values that is phi is equal to here it is 5.14 and like that same thing is followed naturally we follow Brinch Hansen is more appropriate and good in this tabular form a phi is 0 1 2 3 4 whatever it may be degrees it is given equivalent to that nc nq n gamma is given. if it is not given you have to interpret them in linear in bearing capacity equation there are shape factors depth factors and inclination factors these factors are also defined and it is given fcs fqs and f gamma s is given 1 plus b by l n q by n c like that 1 plus b by l tan phi and f gamma s is 1 minus 0. 0.4 into b by l this is for rectangular equation you can see that and these things are some within limitations which are given here and if it is a square b is equal to l and if it is diameter also d is equal to d that is almost all and these shape factors are to be worked out and they are in they influence the bearing capacity total bearing capacity of the equation Apart from the above important factors, shape factor, depth factor, load inclination factor, ground inclination factor, base factor, and rigidity factor, the other factors are also there. Total it is six factors which influence the ultimate bearing capacity. Apart from this, see that for continuous footing, then s is equal to 1 for perpendicular load i is equal to 1 for level foundations base factor is 1 for a ground level a level ground and there is no inclination the g is equal to 1 need to compute factors is when they are not continuous they are not perpendicular and they are not level foundation and then ground level is not horizontal like that ground water affects the foundation and ultimate bearing capacity so we have to analyze the ground water where the ground water is lying how depth it is there and these things are to be done shallow groundwater affects the shear strength in two ways reduces apparent cohesion that takes place when soils are not saturated may necessitate reducing the cohesion measured in the laboratory pore water pressure increases reduces both effective stress and shear strength in the soil same problem as experienced with unsupported slopes also Groundwater affects the bearing capacity of the foundation. There are 
two ways of effects. One is if the groundwater is at the groundwater ground groundwater table is nearer to ground level, then the correction will be 0.5 and will be carried to overburden that is gamma into depth of foundation into NQ surcharge. So that correction will be there. If the groundwater table is at the footing level, then the correction will be 1, means that there is no correction at all. If the groundwater table is in between these two, the correction will be a linear variation and it is carried out. Just like that, if the groundwater table is at the footing level, then the beneath the footing, the wedge failure, the groundwater table at the footing level gives the correction value 0.5 and if it is below the B, if the depth is equal to B, B then the groundwater correction is 1 and it is carried out to half into B into gamma into N gamma terms. These two corrections are to be carried for groundwater table. Footing with the eccentric or inclined loadings. So this also gives the correction to bearing capacity. Footing with one-way eccentricity. So if the eccentricity is there, M into flows one side, naturally another side the pressure will come down. The pressure will come down so that the pressure diagram becomes triangle. If still further if it goes out, then the pressure on side will be negative. That will not acceptable for the eccentricity that is to be carried out. So that correction is carried out in B that is B dash is equal to B minus 2E. The effective width is now like that. It is given and it is easy to. For an eccentric loading Q max is equal to Q by B into L plus B square by L 6M by B square by L the distribution of the normal pressure Q max and means that is eccentric loading. The naturally the eccentric loading M is equal to Q into E. So you get maximum and minimum stresses on either side of the footing. Footing with the two-way eccentricities. And this is also of the same, same order that B dashed or L dashed are calculated accordingly and those things are implemented or put it in the bearing capacity equation to calculate the bearing capacity. Skimton's N values if undrained shear strength parameters are used for the design then a special case arises since phi u is equal to 0 and nq is equal to 1 so qf of the foundation by bearing capacity of foundation cu into nc plus gamma into d values of nc are acquired from skimpton chart which is given that is how it is calculated base factor is also there if the ground is inclined then there is a base factor we have to take it and interpretation is given any codes will give these type of interpretations and it can be done easily bearing capacity from field tests bearing capacity from standard penetration test Mayerhoff proposed correlation for the net allow bearing pressure for foundation with the standard penetration resistance N60 the net pressure has been defined as Q net is equal to Q allowable minus gamma into D 
according to the mayor of theory for 25 mm of estimated maximum settlement this is given n q net is equal to 11.98 into n60 whereas q net allowable is equal to 7.99 n60 3.28 b plus 1 by 3.28 b whole square if the b is greater than 1.22 meters where n60 is the standard penetration number note that equation b is in meters so many test books gives a different tang has given another equation and so there is no confusion everybody has given their own equations in the use for using the standard penetration tests here the tank formula for square foundation is given and that q ultimate is equal to one third of n square b rw rw is the water correction factor r dash w is the water correction below the foundation and like that it is given this can be used and found the q ultimate value bearing capacity for field load test plt plt means plate load test once if the plate load test is there load test with pressure with settlement is here and the settlement is a 25 mm settlement what is the load pressure it requires it is calculated and all. the plate load test is a field test you can do it for shallow foundations only nothing more than that bearing capacity for field load test plt is given q ultimate is equal to q plate into b foundation breadth of foundation by breadth of plate for cohesive soils q ultimate of foundation is equal to q ultimate load test directly it is otherwise in granular soils you have to interpret it with breadth and in cohesive soils it's not required settlement analysis the term settlement means the vertical displacement of a base of a structure when load is applied to the ground surface though base is underlying foundation layer undergoes deformation and causes movement of base the movement is a tilt or sinking in the ground or both vertical downward movement supports soil is called a settlement and upward movement support is called as heave this is the distribution of contact pressures flexible foundation on clay flexible foundation on sand and rigid foundation on clay and rigid foundation on sand it behaves like that the foundation of a footing is there and the load is acting on it the load distribution is 1 is to 1 or 45 degrees it is taken and calculate for each and every layer also can be calculated till the clay layer is there because clay takes more um, settlement gives more settlement in a period of time so immediate settlement is not there so that is to be um, quantified for deep foundations also the same but up to certain depth there is no need of any analysis after that it is there are all all rules are there these rules are given in any any test book consolidation settlement magnitude of settlement is equal to delta h cc uh, coefficient index compression index and h is the thickness of the layer and 1 plus e e is the initial voids ratio log the overburden pressure gamma into h that is sigma dash plus the delta sigma e is the excess pressure which is put on the soil layer that is the weight of the house or weight of the construction is given and divided by 
gamma dash that is gamma into h what is the the in situ stress there so it gives a delta h this total settlement if you each layer if you add it a total settlement is comes into picture that we use it for all types of analysis